Good morning, and welcome to Sunday School with the Agape Fellowship Missionary Baptist Church. I'm Reverend Troy Roland, and I've got some help today, so stick around and watch out for that one. <laughs> today we're going to be talking about prophesying daughters, prophesying daughters. But before we begin, uh, let's start off with a word of prayer. Dear loving Father, we invite you into our hearts and our minds and our souls this morning, Lord. We're asking you to open us up to your word, Father, so that we may be able to carry it into the world, Father, and into our lives, Lord, so that we may talk about you, Father, and, and spread your word of the gospel, Father, to all people in all nations, as we have been commanded to do. It's in Jesus' name we pray, Father, and we thank thee. Amen, amen, and amen. And as always, if you like the video, give me a thumbs up. Uh, <laughs> hit the subscribe button so that way you don't miss any of them. Prophesying daughters, prophesying daughters. Uh, I read an article recently. I was I was actually blessed to have read it. And it started off with these questions. It says, have you ever heard these words before? Have you ever felt like your life wasn't as important as others? Like you didn't have the right to training or knowledge that other people have? Or perhaps you didn't feel as equipped to handle a job. Maybe you are uncertain of your purpose. I read these questions because they were at the beginning of the article, like I said, but the article was actually an article that was addressed towards women of the gospel. And it struck my, my attention because it, it fit in with today's lesson. So as today's lesson was is directed towards women, I, I, I enlisted some help. So, so uh, stay around for that. Today's lesson, like I said, is called Prophesying Daughters. And we're going to start with the in focus. Gina had enjoyed the company of elderly folks since she was a child. Now as an adult, Gina worked taking care of them. She had seen so much heartache. The physical suffering was bad enough, but the emotional suffering like abandonment and loneliness that it was one that hurt them the most. In the past year, there have been several elderly folks in Gina's church who had succumbed to poor health and were no longer able to attend services. Gina genuinely missed seeing their faces in church on Sunday morning. She began to pray for the folks that she missed, and the more she prayed, the greater her burden became. Her burden began to expand beyond the boundaries of her church and extended to the elderly folks who, were, who needed to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit was at work in Gina's heart. Surely she wasn't the only one in the church who saw the need for outreach in this area. Gina spoke with her pastor, and with his prayer and support, she launched the visitation and outreach program for the elder, elderly in her community. The outreach team found that some of the elderly folks wanted to hear nothing about a savior or the gift of salvation. They began to pray that the Holy Spirit would soften those hardened hearts and that he would empower them in their ministry. One by one, Lost souls were led to Christ, not only the elderly, but their family members and caregivers as well. Today's story illustrates how the empowerment of the Holy Spirit at work in one faithful heart can reach out to the lost, hurting souls, and united community. Hmm, that is a wonderful story. And like I said, I've got a surprise for you this morning. Uh, while we go to the scripture... I'm going to give it over to uh, Minister Melissa Roland, and she's going to give us the very first part of our story uh, about Anna, the prophet, coming from Luke 2.36. Let me let her tell you. Today's scripture reading comes from Luke 2nd chapter 36 through the 38th verses. And this is the New Living Translation. The Prophecy of Anna. Anna, a prophet, was also there in the temple. She was the daughter of Phanuel from the tribe of Asher, and she was very old. Her husband died when they had been married only seven years. Then she lived as a widow to the age of 84. She never left the temple, but stayed there day and night, worshiping God with fasting and prayer. She came along just as Simon was talking with Mary and Joseph, and she began praising God. She talked about the child to everyone who had been waiting expectantly for God to rescue Jerusalem. 
May God's word be blessed. That is a wonderful story of the gospel, isn't it? The story about Anna, the prophet, who had been without a husband that she was only married to for seven years. That's an amazing thing that she just went to the church every day and she, she prayed and she fasted and she worshiped God to the point that, that the Holy Spirit had to move in our heart, pretty much like our, our story that we were read earlier. It, it, it moved in our heart and uh, promoted her or, or encouraged her to move out and, and do some things. And one of the things that she did was she ran into baby Jesus uh, for the first time that, that Simeon, the old man Simeon, had had seen the baby and he wanted to see the salvation. So he actually got to see him. And here was Anna. And Anna gets filled so much with the Holy Spirit that she goes out and she tells everybody about the the baby who was bringing salvation, the child that she had seen. It's an awesome and wonderful story. But look how God was using a woman. Many people will tell you that women shouldn't be in pulpits. They, they shouldn't be preaching. They shouldn't be teaching. But I have to be honest. I, I, I've watched women take over places where, where men once were and they just have turned and walked away from the gospel themselves. But women have kept it going and thanks Thank God for a woman who, who uh, actually helped me. So let's continue. Acts 2.16. And again, this is about women. Acts chapter 2 verse 16 says, No, what you see was predicted long ago by the prophet Joel. Verse 17, it says, In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit upon the people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions and your old men will dream dreams. Hmm. Again, there it is again. And the strange thing is in verse 18, he says the same thing again. In those days, I will pour out my spirit even on my servants, men and women alike. Men and women alike. And they will prophesy. Now, prophet lie. <laughs> he had to see Reverend Williams about that one. But uh, but they'll all prophesy. And it says men and women. So <laughs> we we shouldn't turn our backs on women because they say they have a word from the Lord. Turn your back on Minister Rolanda if you want to. She, she's got something for you. <laughs> Verse 19. And I will cause wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and clouds of smoke. God is telling you that what he's going to do. And there will be prophets that will tell us about these things before they actually happen. And some of those prophets will be women. So pay attention to what you're being told. Verse 20 says the sun will become dark and the moon will turn blood red before the great and glorious day of the Lord returns. Hmm. All arrives. We're all waiting for that day. We're all praying for that day. We're always looking for God to come. So when he does come, believe me, we'll all know and we'll all see. Verse 21 says, but everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Call him. Just call on the name of the Lord. And anybody can call on the name of the Lord. I uh, recently had a, a discussion with a cousin of mine and, and we were talking about when and who is allowed to call on God. And everyone is allowed to call on God. Everyone. Now, whether they call on him with the whole heart of, is a different story, but they're all allowed to call on him. Go on to Acts 21. Verses 8 and 9, starting with verse 8, we, we see this thing about women again. Verse 8 says, Every day we went to Caesarea and stayed at the home of Philip the Evangelist, one of the seven men who had been chosen to distribute food. And verse 9 is what gets you. Verse 9 says, He had four unmarried daughters who had the gift of prophecy. Four unmarried daughters who had the gift of prophecy. Isn't that an awesome thing? 
They were all unmarried, but they all had the gift of prophecy. You know, women are throughout the entire Bible. We have women leading armies. We have women saving souls. We have women protecting those who are who are being sought after or ran after. We have women in the upper room when Jesus was there. We have women in the Pentecost. <laughs> we, have, we have a woman giving birth to our Savior. So let me just say this. Women are called to declare the gospel just like men are. We all are. So women are to prophesy. They're there to deliver the word of God. They're to talk about the gospel. They're to, they're to help to save these lost souls. And all of them have burdens on their hearts to do that. Trust me, it's there. So all you have to do is be able to understand that God has something for you in your life to do. And I'm inviting you, God is inviting you to, to, to do his work in accordance with his will. All you have to do is go out and do it. Pray about it. Ask God, what is it that he needs for you to do? And he'll reveal it to you, I guarantee it. He revealed it to my wife, minister that she is, and an awesome one too. You've heard her read today. today. So I'm going to close this out. And I want to close it out with a word of prayer. But it's a simple prayer. Let us bow our heads. Dear loving God, we know we have something to do. Father, we have something to do for you. So we're asking you in our hearts and our minds and our souls, Lord, to, to place that burden on our hearts and point us in the right direction to do your work, Father, in accordance with your will, not ours, nor any man's. It's in Jesus' name that we pray and we thank you. Amen. And again, if you enjoyed this message, that was loud, wasn't it? <laughs> if you enjoyed this message, give me a thumbs up and uh, hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any other lessons. God bless you. God keep you. And God always watch over you. Wash your hands. Wear your mask. COVID is not done. All right. Keep your social distance. If you don't have to go out there, don't go out there at all. God bless you.